this. And these figures, the worst on record since records began in 2004, really shine a spotlight on how desperate it is across our NHS system for hundreds of thousands of people across our country. Would it be any different if Labour was in power right now? Most certainly it would. I mean, the decisions that have, made, that have been made since 2010, uh, whether it's the cuts that we've seen to social care, whether it's been the reorganisation of our NHS, which costs billions of pounds and is creating pressures within the system and fracturing the system, or the cuts we've seen elsewhere, which mean that people turn up in accident and emergency because they find themselves in a crisis or well, they find themselves in a, an acute physical health condition. Uh, it's where people end up. Um, I saw it from myself firsthand when I was in A&E just a few weeks ago. And it wasn't. So I was asked and um, um, told to go to A&E by, by my GP because of a suspected uh, clot on the lung. I'm pregnant, as you can see. And I found myself waiting for over five and a half hours uh, it, before I was uh, put on a trolley. Um, so I will be in those statistics that come out next month. Uh, and I was, I was kept in A&E for over 20 hours, and I heard first hand were, were you on a trolley for... How long the, were you on a trolley I was in the for? waiting room for five and a half hours. Right. And then I was on a trolley, and then I, got, eventually, I came in at, uh, around eight o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until about eight o'clock in the morning the following day that I, I was put on a bed. And I heard first hand from the staff t was talking amongst themselves where at the shift changeover you heard staff saying about the, how they, in, in their view, they, it was unsafe. Um, on that evening that I had been in a &E. um, The triage nurse herself said to me that um, they weren't able to meet their own safety procedures. Um, I was 30 weeks pregnant at the time, and they told me how um, normally I'd be taken straight through, but I'd, uh, unfortunately, um, because of the weights and because of the volume of people there, many people, um, many ambulances that were waiting to actually admit people into hospital, it was totally overflowing. Mm. And you, Are you it, all right? I'm fine now, thank you, yeah. yes. Um, but you only have to look at many programmes that we've seen on the BBC just in the course of the past week from hospitals right across the country to know that this is the reality on the ground. We've already seen the goalposts move. You know, in 2004, when the A&E waiting time target was introduced, it was set at 98%. Mm. It was the coalition government that reduced it, moved that goalpost down to 95%. And we've just heard from your health editor how the government might be seeming to move those goalposts again. What we mm -hmm. actually need is a real focus on what we're actually going to do to fix this problem rather than mask it.